Hello and welcome to another Wobbly Camera Guy video. Today's video we have this beautiful Costa Brands Cavalier Transistor Radio from 1962. Quite a rare set I think because I've not seen many of these around and love the colours, love the cream and love the green. It's not in bad condition again it's another radio from within my bottomless pit of a garage. Um, you can tell the better finish on the back actually so preserved really really well unfortunately it is starting to come away a little bit at the sides i'm gonna to have to do something about that but for the moment i just thought we'd have a look at it see how she performs and do a bit of a general overall view so as i say from 1962 and in fact i know it was actually made on the 14th of june 1962 and uh, because there's a retailer stamp inside and we'll have a look at that at the moment but Bit of an upmarket um, radio, although it's still seven transistors, and I think it uses the GET series of transistors, which I think were made by GEC, and I think also Philips and Mullard of that um, period. Um, as well as having the volume, we actually have a tone control. Obviously, we've actually got the, the um, dial for the various sort of um, stations going in and out, and on the top, we have three buttons just off medium wave and long wave the letting start to come off but i think you can just about see there interestingly enough though on the side besides having the car aerial we have a tape output and a mic input where have you seen a radio with a mic input before and i think the reason this has whoops okay right it has a mic input so they actually use this as a bit of a baby monitor so you imagine the early 60s and you've got junior in the next room i think they just had a microphone put it where that the baby was and kept the radio into uh, the living room or the kitchen wherever they were um, and just sort of monitored the baby make sure it was all right so quite an unusual thing to have on an actual sort of radio but I really like this it's a bit grubby as they all are in my garage and I'll try and clean up just a little bit later on but I don't want to do it too much as I say because the actual sort of covering is starting to come away a little bit and I really don't want to sort of uh, make that happen sort of any further so what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to open it up and see if we can have a look inside have a quick look and then we'll power it up and see how she sounds okay so to put the batteries in like quite a few sets of the period you have to undo two screws no separate battery compartment or anything so i'm just going to pop this on its front and i'm hoping you can see what i'm doing here. it's not the best screwdriver in the world but it'll do um as you can see on the bottom there there's three little if you can see crown studs there just a nice little finish just to raise the radio off the shelf or wherever it happens to be that you actually put the radio on as I say, lovely colours, absolutely superb. I think very much quite an upmarket radio rather than the standard ones of the day. That's not quite undone, just that little bit more. Just a bit caggy handed, so excuse me doing this. There we go. So before we go into the details of the radio inside just to show you and if you can see that it says Fig Hallam Limited 14th of June 1962 past with stamp number 15 I wonder if Vic Hallam is still going It'd be interesting to find out and again what you have there is just talking about to relieve an expired batteries in because they're going to corrode etc so and it says royalties have also been paid so very much of it's um, it period really supply would um, box but that's actually quite good because it actually gives a decent sort of sound for the radio so what do we have well, so we have the get transistors there you can see a couple of them in red as i say these are gc but i think uh, mullard and phillips did them as well those i believe which are on a heat sink are the two output transistors hope you can see this with the output transformer there i'm guessing this ain't looked at any circuits and um, takes two nine volt batteries pp9s i believe for this um capacitors these are ucc caps and they're actually all stamped up made in england when did we actually make any sort of components in uh, 
in this country. It's been a long time ago, so it's good to see that. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop some batteries into it. I have paired it up once, um, about 10 minutes ago, and it did work out okay, but switches were a little bit sort of um, noisy. I'm going to put a little bit of switch cleaner on those. So in order to actually pair it up, I'm going to use two little PP3s. They say it was designed for PP9s. Um, normally, if I'm using my little NICAD uh, converter pack, which will generate the, the um, voltage required. And um, these are just a little bit big, so I'm just gonna put the PP9s in. And to do that, I just use my PP9 to PP3 converter. So let's pop these on and see if we can actually get some sounds out without mixing them up, which is my favorite trick. So just bear with just one moment while I pop these on. Pop the clips on first and then we'll pop the batteries in. And number two, so I'll pop this on. Make sure you get the right way around because I'm not sure whether there's a diode protection in the day, so don't put the wrong voltage onto it. So I'm literally just going to turn this around. I'm not going to put the back on because, as I say, oops, we need to put some switch cleaner on. So let's see what we got. You're doing that for me right now. Tell me which is your favourite from either of those decades, and I'll try and get it on for you between midday and one. So we've got sound control. 80s coming up midday to one, and then 90s to noughties, one till two this afternoon. Lots and lots of brilliant music on BBC Asian Network. I mentioned a couple of things. Does make a bit of difference. What else have we got? It's a bit directional as you can tell with a lot of these ferrite uh, aerials. Let's try the long wave. Well, we've got a French radio station long way, so that's not bad in the daylight. Pretty good. That's Radio 4, I believe. Bit of cricket. If you can hear the noise on that, this is off some of the electrical equipment in my garage. I've got some stuff that's got some noisy power supplies, and invariably they give off a lot of noise. So, I don't think it's the radio. As you can say, they're a little bit stiff, a little bit sticky. So, I'm going to pop some switch cleaner on this now, and then we'll pop the back on and see how we get on. Now, then, in order to do this. The only way I think I'm going to get the switch cleaner in because these are quite enclosed. You see some little access holes there. I'm just going to try a little squirt down those. See if that will help us out just a little bit. Don't put. Oops, too much. It says knocking the camera. Ouch. Let's just see how. Oops, that has. The covers for no run. Done. Help in the back of mind, you. Move them in and out of it. Switch that off. Um, I would have put some on the volume and the tone, but unfortunately I can't get easy access to them. I don't particularly want to strip this down because it's well, it's working well, and there's no point in in doing something for doing its sake. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the batteries back in, put the cover on, and then we'll see how she stands with the cover back on and see if we can try and get a little bit of the dirt off but I'm not going to go too mad with it on this particular one so I'll catch you in a moment. Okay so here we are, pop the cover back on and now I'm just going to try, as you can see on the top it is quite grubby but I am a little bit cautious about trying too hard so I'm just going to try it try it just to tie in a little bit of foam clean and just see if that will actually sort of shift a little bit of the dirt um, so it's just normal box standard foam clean I hope you can see this okay I'm actually going to put some on the cloth rather than the radio and let's just see if it does anything It might do a little bit. It's getting some off. So I'm trying not to rub too hard. Just going to put a little bit more on. 
Oops. Trying to do this without knocking my camera, so sometimes a little bit caggy handed. It really needs quite a lot of time on it. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's 58 years old. It's not doing bad, is it really? Considering these weren't designed for to be, you know, to be around for that longer time. I guess the manufacturers are perhaps thinking five, maybe 10 years tops. Let's get some of the dirt off that dial. It needs quite a bit of uh, TLC on it. Uh, maybe I'll have to do a video just on cleaning of a typical radio and see the various products that are out there see what works see what doesn't um yeah that might be of interest to some of you guys so anyway there we have it colsabon's cavalier seven transistor radio they are germanium um, transistors from the 14th of june 1962 um again see what's on there Nottingham, right? so I live in Nottingham, right? Tony's pretty good. It's a wooden box um, with a decent size light speaker, so it's a good tone, good, good tone, good tone even. Um, yeah, I really like this. I absolutely love the design. The colours are absolutely superb. Let me switch that off so you can actually hear me. So, yes, she needs a little bit of TLC. Unusual with the mic input and the tape output as well, so you don't see that every day especially in 1962 um, yeah absolutely cracking radio so there you go cavalier transistor radio from 1962 hope you enjoyed this and i'll catch up with you soon